Right, here we go. Millie Molly Mandy keeps shop. Once upon a time, Millie Molly Mandy was walking home from school with her little friends, Billy Blunt, Miss Muggins's niece Jilly, and of course, little fella Susan. There they all are. And they were talking about what they would like to do when they were big. <clears throat> Billy Blunt said he'd have a motor bus and drive people to the station and pull their boxes about. Miss Muggins's niece, Jilly, said she would curl her hair and be a lady and act for the pictures. Little friend Susan wanted to be a nurse with long white streamers. Nurses don't wear those nowadays, do they? And push a pram with two babies in it. Oh, the best of luck to her with that. Millie Molly Mandy wanted a shop like Miss Muggins, where she could sell sweets and cut pretty coloured stuff for people's dresses with a big pair of scissors. And oh dear, said Millie Molly Mandy, I wish we didn't have to wait till we'd grown up. Then they came to Miss Muggins' shop and Jilly said goodbye and went in. And then they came to Mr Blunt's corn shop, which was only a few steps further on, and Billy Blunt said bye and went in. And then Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan, with their arms round each other, walked up the white road with the fields each side till they came to the Moggs' cottage. And little friend Susan said goodbye and went in. And Millie Molly Mandy went hoppity skipping on alone until she came to the nice white cottage with the thatched roof where mo mother was at the gate to meet her. Next day was Saturday. The dog's just arrived and was wondering if she's going to have a drink. And Millie Molly Mandy went down to the village. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'll start that paragraph again. Next day was Saturday and Millie Molly Mandy went down to the village on an errand for mother. And when she'd done it, she saw Miss Muggins standing at her shop door, looking rather worried. Hello, Judy. And when Miss Muggins saw Millie Molly Mandy, she said, Oh, Millie Molly Mandy, would you mind running to ask Mrs Jakes if she could come and mind my shop for an hour? Tell her I've got to go to see someone on very important business and I don't know what to do. And Jilly's gone picnicking. So Millie Molly Mandy ran to ask Mrs Jakes. But Mrs Jakes says, Oh, tell Mrs Muggins, I'm very sorry. I've just got cakes in the oven. I can't leave them. So Millie Molly Mandy ran back and told Miss Muggins. And Miss Muggins said, I wonder if Mrs Blunt would come. So Millie Molly Mandy ran back uh, to Mrs... Oh, I've lost the place. Millie Molly Mandy ran to ask Mrs Blunt, sorry. But Mrs Blunt said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm simply up to my eyes in house cleaning. I can't leave it just now. So Millie Molly Mandy ran back and told Miss Muggins. And Miss Muggins said she didn't know of anybody else she could ask. And then Millie Molly Mandy said, oh, Miss Muggins, couldn't I look after the shop for you? I'll tell you, tell people you'll be back in an hour. And if they only want a sugar stick or something, I could give it to them. I know how much it is. Miss Muggins looked at Millie Molly Mandy, and then she said, Well, you aren't very big, but I know you're careful, Millie Molly Mandy. So she gave her lots of instructions about asking people if they'd come back in an hour, and not selling things until she, unless she was quite sure of the price, and so on. And then Miss Muggins put on her hat, very important that, her hat and her feather boa, and hurried off. And Millie Molly Mandy was left alone in charge of the shop. Millie Molly Mandy felt very solemn and careful indeed. She dusted the counter with a duster which she saw hanging on a nail and then she peeked into the window at all the handkerchiefs and socks and bottles of sweets and she could see Mrs Hubble arranging the loaves and cakes in her shop window opposite and Mr Smale who had the grocer's shop with the little counter at the back where he posted parcels and bought stamps and letter paper standing at his door enjoying the sunshine. And Millie Molly Mandy felt so pleased that she had a shop as well. And then suddenly the door handle rattled and the little bell over the door jingle jangled up and down. And who should come in but little friend Susan. And how little friend Susan did stare when she saw Millie Molly Mandy behind the counter. Miss Muggins has gone out on important business but she'll be back in an hour. What do you want? said Millie Molly Mandy. A packet of safety pins for mother. What are you doing here? said little friend Susan. I'm looking after the shop, said Millie Molly Mandy, and I know where the safety pins are because I had to buy some yesterday. 
So Millie Molly Mandy wrapped up the safety pins in a piece of thin brown paper and twisted the end, just as Miss Muggins did. And then she handed the packet to little friend Susan, and little friend Susan handed her a penny. And then little friend Susan wanted to stay and play shops with Millie Molly Mandy, but Millie Molly Mandy shook her head solemnly and said, No, this isn't play, it's business. I've got to be very, very careful. You'd better go, Susan. And just then the bell jangled again, and a lady came in. So little friend Susan went out. She peered through the window for a time to see how Millie Molly Mandy got on, but Millie Molly Mandy wouldn't look at her. The lady was Miss Bloss, who lived opposite over the baker's shop with Mrs Bloss. She wanted a quarter of yard of pink flannelette because she was making a wrapper for her mother, and she hadn't bought quite enough for the collar. She said she didn't like to waste a whole hour till Miss Muggins returned. Millie Molly Mandy stood on one leg and wondered what to do, and Miss Bloss tapped with one finger and wondered what to do. And then Miss Bloss said, that's the roll my flannelette came off. I'm quite sure Miss Muggins wouldn't mind my taking some. So between them, they measured off the pink flannelette, and Millie Molly Mandy fetched Miss Muggins's big scissors, and Miss Bloss made a crease exactly where the quarter yard came. And Millie Molly Mandy breathed very hard, and cut slowly and carefully right along the crease to the end. And then she wrapped the piece up and gave it to Miss Bloss. And Miss Bloss handed her half a crown, saying, Ask Miss Muggins to send me the chains when she gets back. And then Miss Bloss went out. And then for a time, nobody came in, and Millie Molly Mandy amused herself by trying to find the rolls of stuff that different people's dresses had come off. There was her own pink and white striped cotton, looking so lovely and new, and Mother's blue checked apron stuff, and Mrs Jakes's Sunday gown, and then rattle went the handle, handle and jingle went the bell, and who should come in but Billy Blunt. I'm Miss Muggins, said Millie Molly Mandy. What do you want to buy? Where is Miss Muggins, said Billy Blunt. So Millie Molly Mandy had to explain again. And then Billy Blunt said he'd wanted a penny worth of aniseed balls. So Millie Molly Mandy stood on a box and reached down the glass jar from the shelf. They were twelve a penny, she knew, for she'd often bought them. So she counted them out. And then Billy Blunt counted them. And Billy Blunt said, You've got one too many here. So Millie Molly, counted, uh, Millie Molly Mandy counted again, and she found one too many too. So they dropped one back in the jar, and Millie Molly Mandy put the others into a little bag and swung it over by the corners, just as Miss Muggins did, and gave it to Billy Blunt, and Billy Blunt gave her his penny. There's Billy Blunt in the shop. And this is Millie Molly Mandy swinging the bag over, because I expect you've never seen that. Because things don't come in little paper bags anymore, do they? They come in packets, all ready done up. You have to put something in the bag. <laughs> you can't see what you can hear to make it heavy enough. I don't know, I'm going to have to where to hold this now. So you've got your aniseed balls in the bottom, and you swing it over. Oh, like that. Oh, this one's torn because it's a very old bag because you don't get many little paper bags these days. No, that wasn't as good a demonstration as I hoped. You'll have to use your imaginations. Or get Mummy or Daddy to show you if they can find a small paper bag. Anyway, when Billy Blunt has got his aniseed balls, he grinned and said, Morning, ma'am. And Millie Bonnie Mandy said, Good morning, sir. And Billy Blunt went out. After that, an hour began to seem rather a long time with the sun shining so outside, but at last the little bell gave a lively jangle again, and Miss Muggins had returned. And though Millie Molly Mandy had enjoyed herself very much, she thought perhaps after all she would rather wait until she was grown up before she kept shop for herself. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Oh, it's done this before. I'll just shut the laptop.